Good evening, family. This is Love Wisdom. I hope everyone um, had a productive day. Um, I want to talk about Nia Wilson. Um, she is trending in the news. She is trending on social media. Um, not in a positive way, unfortunately. This sister was only 18 years old and was stabbed to death. Um, at a BART train station in Oakland, California last night at 9.45 p.m. Before I get started, I want to offer my um, condolences to her family. Um, it is my prayer that her sister recovers from her injuries and I hope they catch this son of a bitch so without further ado, let me just get started. This is coming from heavy.com. I'm going to post the link to the article. Also, um, Nia Wilson has a GoFundMe page that I'm also going to put in the link below if you want to donate. Um, they have exceeded their goal, but in any way possible, if you can help that family, please do. I'm going to be donating to um to the family. So here's what heavy.com um said. Nia Wilson was 18 years old. Um she was stabbed riding a BART um train in Oakland, California at 9:45 p.m. For those of you who don't know what BART stands for, it's the Bay Area Rail and Transportation and her sister um Tashia who was 21 she was also stabbed but she was wounded and um taken to the hospital in stable condition the um the perpetrator the son of a bitch the savage his name is john cowell who fled the scene and is currently at large So, according to Heavy, the stabbing occurred at the MacArthur station after the suspect followed them off the train. Um, Nia was celebrating the birthday of her boyfriend who passed away two years ago after drowning in a lake. Um, Cowell, John Cowell, uh, was a felon who currently on parole. BART police found a large knife near construction site um, under Highway 24 um, along the MacArthur Access Road. They bagged the knife as evidence. Um, they're not sure if it was used in the stabbing. Now, here's the thing that not only confused and angered me, but a lot of people felt this same way. The police had the surveillance footage, but didn't share them until this afternoon around 12.30 p.m. And the reporter asked BART officials, are you going to release the photos? And they said we were not releasing the photos immediately. Now, this occurred at 9.45 p.m. last night. Sunday night, July 22nd. You released the surveillance footage in this man's mugshot today at 12.30 p.m. You have given this man a huge window to harm other people. Endangering the lives of other people. And you didn't release the surveillance until today around 1230. Why wasn't this man on the nightly news, the morning news, the mid-morning news, the afternoon news? Because I tell you, if this was in reverse, those two sisters would have been on the nightly news. The morning news, the mid-morning, and the afternoon. 24-hour non-stop coverage. But the 
fact that you didn't release this until 1230, you had potentially put the lives of other people at risk. This savage could be heading to Mexico for all we know. He could be headed to another state for all we know. Where is the urgency to get this savage off the street before he kills somebody else? Where is the urgency? Well, we all know the answer to that, but let's move on. Now, one man witnessed the last part of the attack. So he heard a commotion and turned around to see the victim bleeding from her neck and the suspect poking the other woman. He didn't hear any arguing or yelling. So the savage, John Cowell, was very stealthy in his movements because in the beginning he followed them off the train. So I'm going to make the assumption that he had these women in his target. These were the targets. And he stalked his prey. Okay? And he operated in stealth. There were no arguing, no yelling. It was quiet. Until he heard a little grumbling. And I'm assuming this is coming from the older sister that was stabbed when she realized what was happening. You have another um, individual. Her name was Nicole Mickles. And her train had entered the MacArthur station. And it was quiet. So when she got off, she heard screams. And the sister came out screaming for help. Um, Mickles tried to calm down um, Tashia. Excuse me. If I'm pronouncing her name wrong, I'm sorry. Um, trying to calm the older sister down while the officials attempted CPR on Nia. And she said it was a white man that slid the throat of Nia. So you had two witnesses. One saw the last piece of the attack. Okay. And now you had another witness who trained just came in and she saw this, this sister screaming for help. So these two witnesses are very important because one saw the last, the last portion of the attack and the other came on the scene after it while, the, you know, when the older sister was crying for help, screaming for help rather. And one can only imagine what both of those sisters They didn't see it coming. They didn't see it coming. They didn't see it coming. And it was met with swiftness, ferocity, and savagery. And he just, he just walked off like, hey, He's just getting off the train. I got my stop and I'm going home. After he killed one person and injured the other. And to see your younger sister dying in front of you while you're trying to save your own life. And the savage is... Roaming free right now.
right now roaming free. We don't know where he at. But he out there. And he's a felon. He was a felon that's on parole. Go figure. The family described Nia as a beautiful woman who loved fashion and makeup. Um, she was a high school student. She just got a new job. You know, and to see the father crying, you know, he works at a hospital and he see, you know, the stab victims and the gunshot victims. But to hit home that is your child and he's demanding justice. We will never know Nia's full potential. We will never know. Her life stopped at 18. She will forever be an 18 year old. Full of hopes and full of dreams that we'll never see manifested. Because some bastard decided that I'm going to be judge, jury, and executor. And got the nerve and the audacity to still be walking up and down the damn streets. Putting an entire city, perhaps a damn state, on alert. And shame on Oakland PD. Shame on Bart for having these damn photos and surveillance released at 1230. Today. And this happened at 945 last night. You gave him a head start. There's no excuse for that. There's no explanation for that. But in any event, family in Oakland, in California, my people, my melanated people, please be very careful. Be very careful. If you don't need to be out there, don't go out there. Be very, very careful. I know sometimes we on our cell phones, we text and we listen to music. That is not the time. You need... To have your ears open, you need to be fully aware of your surroundings. Okay? Be very, very aware of your surroundings. You don't need anything distracting you because you don't know what's going to come up behind you, what's going to jump up in front of you or on the side. You need to be on point. These sisters didn't even know what hit them. So be on guard. Be on point. Be very careful out here in these streets. Be in groups if you need to be in groups. You need to be in groups. Don't travel anywhere alone. Have your pepper spray. Have your taser with you. Now, I'm not sure what the laws are in California when it comes to um, a firearm. I don't know if it's an open um, carry. You know, can see, I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, and you're able to carry your weapon. Carry your weapon. Okay, so once again, my condolences to the Wilson family. Um, it is my prayer of the recovery of the oldest sister. I hope justice is served. The link to this article, heavy.com, is going to be below. The link to the GoFundMe page is also going to be um, below. Family, just please be very safe out there. 
Be safe, be vigilant, and be blessed.